and welcome to another edition of Legalese. I'm attorney Krista Berry, and this is my program where I like to talk to you about uh, things related to personal injury law and uh, answer any questions that you might have. Um, those of you just tuning in, this is Legalese with Krista Berry. Um, and um, uh, if you like what you hear on this, please sign up uh, for my uh, show on um, uh, YouTube. We have uh, the Legal East show there, and you can sign up for that, or you can like, comment, or share uh, below. But thank you for joining me. Now, cars are amazing instruments. And as a personal injury attorney, I deal with motor vehicles, cars, trucks, motorcycles, and their dynamics and their strengths and weaknesses and failures every day. And they are really, truly amazing machines. In fact, one person once said that a car is the closest thing to a living creature that human beings will ever create. And I guess aside from our cell phones, it's pretty tough to argue that that isn't the truth. But, um, you know, we, we like how our cars look. We like how they operate. We like how fast they can go. We, uh, you know, they really, really give us a sense of, uh, of self-esteem when we drive a great car. But really more importantly than the way the cars look is really how they perform and really how safe they are. Because if a car looks amazing but doesn't protect you, then you're out there and you're rolling the dice every day you're driving. it. So your vehicle is equipped with several mechanisms. And many of these mechanisms are necessary for the operation of the car, the engine, the transmission, the radiator, the axles, the tires, and so forth, the steering wheel, the steering column. But there are certain features that are part of the car that uh, aren't really required for it to run but are important safety features that the car has nonetheless. Um, examples of this would be your windshield wipers, your directional signals, your car's bumper. Uh, your cars can, uh, you know, windshield wipers, the, the vehicle can operate without any of these. But there's one very, very important component of the vehicle that I just wanna talk to you about briefly tonight, and that is the black box. Only that's not it. This is what a black box looks like. This is called the airbag module. And you're used to hearing about how airplanes have their flight recorders, which record all of the moments that occur before uh, uh, an incident occurs, a crash. You had the recording of Sully landing the, uh, the airline uh, in, in the middle of the uh, Hudson River. Uh, all that information from when the plane takes off to its speed and its trajectory and its angles of, of ascent and descent, they're all recorded in the flight recorder. Now, similarly, we have the SRS airbag module, and this is located inside of your car. Uh, it's very, very misunderstood, uh, but it does act very much like a, a plane's flight recorder. Um, it basically controls your airbags, yes, but it also runs everything from airbag sensors to seatbelts all of this runs through this, and the information that the sensors produce are stored inside of the airbag sensor. So the sensors for every component of your car that requires a sensor runs the information from the sensors through the airbag module. Now, it's usually located underneath the seat or under the dashboard, but please don't go looking for this in your car. In fact, the only time this device should ever see the light of day is in a situation where you've been in an accident and it's necessary for either your mechanic or preferably your lawyer's hired forensic engineer to pull this component out of the car so that it can be examined. So when you've been in an accident, now even a minor accident, the car's sensors alert the airbag module, which then records the information uh, and it records it as data and hard codes, which it stores. Um, in fact, even stores information up to eight seconds before the accident. So you know, uh, this is very, very important piece of information because this is going to reveal later on what the exact circumstances were with regard to the condition of your car before and at the time of the accident. So when your seatbelts go off, the sensors record that event. They store it as code inside this module. So it's very, very important. And um, basically valuable information about the incident can be obtained from the module and from the sensors, um, it can detect the speed that your vehicle was traveling at the time of the crash, uh, whether or not a brake light switch was activated during the impact. Uh, it can 
determine your engine speed, your throttle position. Um, it also has in information about the occupants of the vehicle, which it uses to determine which airbags to deploy. I, sure you sat in your car and noticed that when you don't have a passenger with you in the front seat, the uh, passenger airbag light goes off. However, once a passenger is seated in the front seat or something else with weight comparable to a person's, then you'll see the airbag go on. And that's all this doing its job. Its sensors are detecting the presence of a passenger and it is then enabling the airbags to function should they need to, in addition to recording everything. Uh, it'll also record the use of seat belts. Uh, seatbelt pretensioner deployment, uh, airbag deployment, impact speed changes, uh, all of those things that occur during vehicle impacts are all going to be stored inside this device. So it's obviously very, very important. And one of the reasons it's important is because if your attorney needs to have a forensic engineer uh, reproduce this evidence for trial, then it is often very useful because it can often belie a lot of testimony from dishonest drivers. So suppose the person that caused the accident were to say, well, the person was, was approaching my position, but they were speeding. Well, we can determine through the use of the information stored in this that your driver maybe wasn't speeding or did hit their brakes uh, or uh, you know wasn't driving radically or somebody did have their seatbelt on if it's alleged that perhaps they didn't. So this is something that if you're involved in a car accident, uh, typically speaking, people get in accidents and these modules are removed from the vehicle and then they are reset so that you can repair your vehicle and operate your vehicle again. Uh, if you don't reset the module, then the other sensors in the car will not work and the car won't operate. However, before this is ever reset, when you've been in an accident, you need to make sure that your attorney has had the opportunity to have this module pulled from your car and had the information inside it uploaded. Otherwise, if you authorize the mechanic to reset the airbag module after an accident happens before your attorney or his forensic engineer has had the ability to do that, then uh, you may be jeopardizing your ability to bring a claim uh, in some respects because the information in this black box or silver box in this case could be forever lost. Uh, and that's it. That's what the uh, airbag module, the SRS airbag module does, and, and they're in all the new cars nowadays. It's your own little mini flight recorder that goes with you everywhere you go in your car, records everything that the car sensors have to say, and basically stores important information, uh, in particular when you've been involved in an accident. But that's all for tonight. That's a short presentation. I just wanted to show you what this thing is and what it does. So like, if you like what you heard, please subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel, Legalese, and please like, share, or comment below. And also please uh, tune in next week where I'm going to have a guest and we're going to be discussing the importance of uninsured motorist coverage on your insurance policy. But folks, thank you very much for tuning in and have a wonderful evening.